So in this video I want to revisit the uh, cantenna that I did in my very first video that I uploaded on YouTube on this channel because uh, I've done uh, quite a few different changes to that design since I first uploaded it. Now I've made a few changes to this design since I first uploaded that video but uh, we're still going to use a toilet roll holder to actually base the antenna on. These uh, are a pretty standard size, I bought them from lots of different places and they are always 265mm long and their diameter is 90mm. Uh, now the reason I want to actually go back and revisit this is because for one I've uh, swapped out that BNC connector that I did in the first video and I'm now using a SME connector. One of the reasons that I used a uh, BNC connector is previous to the um, quadcopter hobby really taking off or to be honest that's what I would put it down to SMA connectors were really really expensive so a lot of people like me use BNC connectors to uh, build their antennas now it is true that a BNC connector is uh, not microwave rated but um, don't try not to get confused between test equipment and an actual uh, Wi-Fi antenna. To be honest with you, with a BNC connector, it's uh, not going to make that much difference over an SMA connector. And especially these cheap ones, these um, actual cheap ones that I get from Hobby King and other places on eBay, uh, I would not use these on my uh, test equipment either because um, they are slightly different to the uh, expensive ones that um, manufacturers sell for actual network analyzers and things like that. Uh, the uh, genuine ones that are really microwave rated are probably twice as heavy as these ones so there is a big difference but uh, the SMA connectors have come really down in price over the last few years so uh, it's just more convenient because most uh, Wi-Fi adapters do come with an SMA connector now and also you don't have to use a uh, pigtail of uh, coax to actually bring that BNC connector down to an SMA connector to connect to your Wi-Fi card you get a much better signal if you can attach your Wi-Fi card directly onto the cantenna itself with no coax even even a microwave rated coax will still have um, some loss in there so if you can get away with connecting directly um, it's always a good idea to actually do that now another reason for the revision is because I've come up with a much better way to actually mount the cantenna onto a tripod. Originally I used uh, some tube and uh, I cut it in half and I epoxied it on which didn't work because it would fall off after a while. I also used bolts uh, to actually drill through that uh, half piece of pipe into the cantenna and then tapped for the threads for a uh, tripod mount onto the tube itself, the plastic tube, but that was messy and I didn't like that either. So what I've actually come up with in this video is uh, three little right angled brackets that I've actually riveted together and riveted it to uh, the actual cantenna itself. And one of the right angle brackets, I've just tapped out the threads for the uh, tripod and uh, that does an excellent job of mounting it. And another revision for the uh, Cantenna video itself is because um, now that I've actually got uh, test equipment here in the uh, workshop, the uh, wavelength for the Cantenna that I originally used in that video was a little bit too long. So the uh, wavelength that uh, you cut the driven element down to in this video is actually 31 millimeters. I can't remember what uh, I used in the first video but it was just uh, slightly longer than that and uh, 31 millimeters works perfectly with the uh, diameter for this cantenna and that's one thing I have to stress when you're actually building antennas uh, or following along some of the videos that I actually do because a lot of people will uh, write normally a one-liner comment saying that's not the wavelength for 2.4 gigahertz but the actual wavelength of the frequency itself never changes, that's a constant. But uh, depending on the design and uh, the way it's actually connected, etc., there are a few different uh, things to take into consideration. The actual wavelength of the driven element itself to pick up the 2.4 GHz frequency can change. And um, the uh, design, especially, of an antenna can have a significant effect in uh, shortening 
or lengthening the uh, wavelength that we need for the uh, driven element to work at the frequency that we're after normally at 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz or um, you know so forth so uh, that can change and a lot of people can't uh, really grasp that but um, this one for instance this is my horn which uh, I made a couple of years ago and uh, I've just actually while I've been upgrading uh, the uh, cantennas here I've just I used to have a BNC connector here so I've taken that off and I've now put an SMA connector on this as well and the actual horn that um, I've got on the uh, end of this came from an old CRT monitor and this is just a toilet brush holder again but because I've got this horn on here the uh, driven element that's inside this is again slightly shorter and that comes in at uh, 3.7 millimeters so it's a little bit shorter than the driven element in these cantennas and that's all down to just having this horn on the end and again this is a can and I'm going to be uh, using this in uh, I don't know if it's going to be the next video but it will be soon to uh, create a cantenna again for the 2.4 gigahertz but because this is so small um, again it's uh, a totally different wavelength again so that's uh, something to bear in mind the uh, online calculators when you put your measurements in for the diameter of the can and the length of the can if you notice the actual driven element always say stays the same length whatever they're uh, actually working with in their calculator but uh, to be honest with you depending on the diameter of the can and depending on the length etc the actual wavelength that you actually need to keep it on centre frequency can change so some of the items that I'm going to be using I'm obviously going to use one of these toilet brush holders and uh, what I'm actually going to do is do all my measurements and drilling along this seam here now this seam is on most if not all of these um, stainless steel type toilet roll holders so it gives you a nice straight line to actually do your markings off and uh, it's also a lot neater if that uh, actual seam is on the bottom of the uh, cantenna itself now as for the wire I'm going to use some 21 SWG wire here now it is uh, a lot thinner than what most people uh, tell you to use whether you look at uh, videos on how to uh, construct one of these or on blogs now the reason why I like the thinner wire I believe that uh, if you are going to make an antenna and you can get away with using the thinnest wire possible not all um, actual designs you can get away with using the thinner wire of course because sometimes it's exposed but uh, if uh, for like the cantenna where the uh, probe is going to be down here uh, towards the bottom of the cantenna itself and we're also going to seal this end up here if you can get away with it actually use it and the reason for that is because the thinner wire along with your actual measurement of the wavelength itself means that it will actually stay in that three frequency not just um, resonant at the frequency you want but uh, it will not be as susceptible to pick up frequencies on either side of that scale so it just makes it a lot more of a precise antenna for the actual frequency that you want using the uh, thinner type of wire here so this is 21 SWG and to connect to the uh, cantenna I'm going to use one of these uh, little bulkhead connectors it's uh, an SMA connector I'm going to solder that on it's directly onto the cantenna that way you can uh, make up or purchase a pigtail if you'd like a uh, piece of coax coming out from the bottom or if like me you just want to uh, screw something like your alpha card directly into the cantenna and that way you won't get any loss through the coaxial cable now what we're going to do is drill a small hole in this so the driven element can fit through and up into the uh, cavity of the cantenna itself and that hole wants to be 51 0.4 millimeters away from uh, the uh, end here so this is our back reflector here and we want it to be uh, 51.4 millimeters in and then drill our hole now with these toilet brush holders what you've got is you've got a small recess here that's seven millimeters in so what we're actually going to need to do for this is the 51.4 millimeters we're going to have to extend that measurement to 58.4 millimeters to take into account that the uh, back reflector here on this uh, toilet brush holder is slightly recessed 
and I'm drilling a hole here using a uh, two millimeter drill bit just uh, wide enough diameter to fit that uh, driven element up and through into the container itself because I'm not going to drill any holes for the uh, bulkhead SMA connector because I'm actually going to solder that directly onto this cantenna. So I've got the hole drilled out and it's just a little bit wider than the uh, copper wire that I'm going to use for the driven element and plus when I actually cut this off to length I'm also going to put a little bit of heat shrink tubing around this just so it doesn't make contact with the uh, can itself and it'll end up grounding and then obviously it won't uh, work at all. Now I'm ready to actually solder on the driven element part of the antenna directly onto this uh, bulkhead connector here. Now what I've actually done is just tapered it down, sharpened that end up a little bit with a Dremel just so it goes into that solder cup there and we get a nice strong connection with a little bit of solder and uh, I'm not actually going to measure this off until I've got it soldered in there so I'm going to measure off taking into account the solder cup as well so we get a nice clean measurement so I hope you can see there what I've actually done is I've just put the smallest amount of uh, solder on the end of that tapered edge there really thin just uh, like a second skin if you like and same with the solder cup just a really small amount of solder in there and a little bit of solder on the soldering iron hold them together and just uh, put some heat back in there again it all melts and you'll get a really strong connection without all that mess of uh, residual solder that you've got to clean away at the end so I've trimmed away a little bit of the excess just guesstimated it there just to make it easier but uh, what you've got to do now is get your ruler in there and measure it off at uh, 31 millimeters now what I've got here are some uh, pre-made little measuring tools even uh, you've seen these before when I've actually built by quads and clover leaves etc so what I do with this is just put it over the top there and then I can get my tin snips and just simply snip that off so as I said I'm going to actually solder this in place instead of using little bolts it's just a a lot cleaner and a lot less fuss drilling holes so I've uh, actually uh, cleaned away some of the paint from the uh, can itself so I can actually solder directly onto this now although this is called stainless steel it's not it's more of a uh, tin it uh, actually rusts it's uh, trust me it's not stainless steel so I've cleaned that away there and I've also cleaned the uh, sides of this bulkhead connector here I've got rid of all that gold finish that's on there so we're down to the actual metal so I can actually solder directly onto this a little bit of heat on each side each corner and get some solder flowing in there and you don't need it all that hot actually you could probably do this with uh, quite a cheap soldering iron you don't need an excessive amount of heat to actually flow, flow solder around there at all so I've got the uh, connector in place now, it's in there nice and solid, it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So uh, just finally to tidy this up I'm just going to use the Dremel tool, grind away any excess solder there just so it looks a bit neater when uh, we actually come and paint it. So I'm now going to uh, move on to the second reason why I'm uh, doing a uh, updated video on the Cantena is because of a uh, much better uh, tripod mount for this antenna and uh, what I've actually done um, I think you've seen it in uh, one of my previous videos where uh, I use one of these to put a tripod mount onto an antenna is um, this one here I've actually tapped it out with um, a uh, thread tap so I can actually screw on a uh, small tripod these are cheap off eBay they don't cost a lot of money at all so you can actually screw it on there and I've actually come up using uh, two more of these little uh, right angled uh, connectors here and I've actually riveted them on here and here directly onto the cantenna and I've got this one going through the uh, centre of these two and riveted it on again just there and that gives me a nice solid base so I can uh, attach a uh, tripod onto it. One of the uh, main um, problems I had with the original one is uh, I think I had to go at uh, epoxying a half a piece of uh, tubing on here and tapped into that and uh, I also used some bolts as well to attach it so uh, it was a little bit more you know substantial because the epoxy 
kept coming off but uh, this is just a, a much neater way of doing it so two of these right angles there and uh, you've got your tapped out right angle which goes into the middle and they all get riveted together and riveted onto the cantenna itself so as you can see here I've got the two holes drilled and I've riveted this first bracket in place here so what I'm actually going to do now is rivet all three of these together and the reason I rivet this one first is because the actual one with the threads so I can attach the uh, tripod to as you can see goes over the top of that one so I wouldn't be able to get that rivet in there so I'm going to rivet all three of them together now through the center there and then finally a rivet in here so it's riveted in place and it's on there it's really strong it's not going to go anywhere and probably um, something else you could try only I don't have the uh, equipment and tools is to actually braise some sort of bracket on here that you could actually attach the tripod to but uh, riveting is pretty cheap that riveting gun I bought off uh, eBay with some rivets for less than a five or so I'm quite pleased how this has worked out and that's what they look like inside the can so they don't protrude too much above the can there it's not going to make any difference to the actual operation of this antenna now to block the end of the cantenna off what I've actually done is I've got some cork matting I just uh, tip the cantenna up on its end and I drew around the uh, cantenna onto the cork matting and I just cut this out with uh, a pair of scissors and I epoxied it in place to the end there when it had dried I just got my uh, sanding block and went round and uh, tidied it up so I've got a test set up here and uh, again I'm using my test router what I always use and uh, this time it's about 65 meters away going through four brick walls so because the cantenna is uh, slightly more par powerful even though it's uh, quite a narrow beam width I uh, wanted to do quite a fair test and I've got the um, longer range um, rubber duck antenna on this at the moment from Alpha it's uh, slightly more DB than a uh, standard one and it's coming in at just uh, above 50% so it's quite solid but uh, that's not a very good signal if you want to uh, actually connect to the internet etc so what I'm going to do now is swap this antenna out and attach the cantenna and I'm hoping we get up to um, almost a hundred percent what we'll see so remember the cantenna is extremely directional so I'll just try and get the best signal I can so as you can see it's already up into the uh, 95% there so that's not bad at all I'm uh, hitting about 95-96% uh, there so you can see how powerful a cantenna really is but you can also see the uh, signal dropping up and down and that's not because it's p picking up a uh, poor signal it's me moving it around trying to get uh, the best signal that I possibly can. You've only got to move this a couple of millimeters to one side and it will drop down. It really is that directional. So for the second part of this test what I've actually decided to do is do a sweep of the uh, access points around me first with a uh, single biquad and then with the cantenna and we can uh, look at the results because the single biquad on paper has similar performance to the cantenna but as I've already uh, mentioned the cantenna has um, it's a lot more focused it's a lot more uh, of a narrower beam so we'll probably pick up more access points with the uh, cantenna than the biquad even though they're uh, similar spec um, antenna so we'll do a scan And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it around a bit. And I don't uh, have a lot of access points around where I live, to be honest. There's a lot of retired people around here. And uh, they just don't have internet connections or they have uh, wired ones, not wireless ones. So I'm just slowly moving it around, moving the backward 
around the top of my head I'm just sat here in my workshop and we've picked up 17 access points with the uh, by quad and as I say round here that's not too bad at all with the lack of access points there is to actually scan so I'm going to change it over to the cantenna so again I'm just holding it above my head and I'm going to do a slow turn and already we can see a few more access points popping up there and I'll do a second turn like I did with a bi quad So hopefully that's uh, a little test to show you the difference between the uh, focus beam of the Cantenna and the uh, wider beam of the Biquad. Now one more thing I just want to note before we actually end the video is the Cantenna does have quite a high VSWR, it's about 1.5 so it has a high reflected power back down the transmission line down to your uh, Wi-Fi card or whatever and uh, you really cannot get away from that there's there's not a lot that the average user at home can do about it but because it's such a powerful antenna anyway it kind of negates that uh, reflected power back so because it is such a good performer then really it's something that you just have to put up with with a design of a cantenna you can uh, try and uh, tune it by having some tuning rods coming in at different angles and what it is uh, you normally see it's on a thread and uh, a piece of uh, metal tube actually uh, goes down into the cantenna that is uh, passive it's not connected to the driven element and uh, just having that little bar uh, depending on what uh, how deep it actually impregnates the cantenna so to speak it will actually tune the VSWR and you can bring it down but uh, as a retail product the, it's not really feasible because you do need uh, some test equipment, a network analyzer to actually test it before you actually use it to reset your tuning rods because you're only talking a uh, fraction of a turn um, on the depth just to uh, get it just right. So as a retail product, it's not really feasible. So if you did enjoy it, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Any comments below? I've uh, built a uh, about six of, I think no five of these and uh, so I'm going to put them in the shop to actually sell I haven't decided on a price yet I'm going to have a look at the competition but uh, from the ones I've seen on eBay for sale a lot of the Chinese ones I'd stay well clear of them they uh, don't look uh, too good at all they're not much um, of an upgrade from the old Pringles can to be quite honest with you and uh, yeah five of these will be in the shop so if you uh, want one and if you don't want to make one then uh, you're more than welcome to go along there and purchase one so that's it for this video guys and hopefully you'll join me on the next one